All right, guys, this module here is all about putting it all together. And it's really going to be closing the deal, putting it all together. It's kind of the same thing at the end of the day. And I'm going to do my best to keep this video nice, short, and sweet because the last couple have been around 20 minutes. And I want to try to keep this course, you know, around one and one to one and a half hours long so you can actually get through it. So when it comes to closing the deal and putting it all together, Let's just recap, right? Number one, we need to focus on marketing in the beginning. That's really what it meant, what this whole business is built around. It's marketing you and your business and letting people know that you're looking for distressed properties and you're looking to help people that are in distressed situations. And how you can do that is by offering them convenience, right? Quick cash as is, convenient ways to for them to unload or for you to purchase the property in exchange for discounts. If you are not getting a good discount or a good deal on a property, well, then you shouldn't be offering a ton of convenience to the seller because you're probably going to disappoint them when you can't close on it or you can't find a buyer, a cash buyer, a partner who can. So please keep in mind, this is a marketing business and you got to get great deals on properties in order to, to wholesale them and make a profit. So marketing is very important. Next, once you get leads, those leads are really just opportunities. Opportunities to go make friends, opportunities to run appointments, opportunities to make offers. When it comes to making offers, we use a simple one-page contract, which I've shared in this course, and we've, we've, we've gone over it in the using contract section. Don't overthink the paperwork. It is so simple. In fact, it's the simplest part of this entire business. Okay, use the contract, get the property under contract, but make sure that you're that you are not, you know, selling yourself short and telling a seller you can close in three days when that's not really possible. Right. Make sure you build in 10 or 15 or maybe even 20 business days to do your inspections. That gives you time to find a buyer. It gives you time to run comps and do due diligence and determine repairs. It also delays you from having to deposit your earnest money right away. Once you have a property under contract, you have inventory. We've talked a lot about this in this course. You got to have inventory for you to make money in this business. So now that you have a property under contract, you need to turn around and you need to market that property. In fact, in the last module, that's all we talked about, ways in which to market your deal or your property or your contract to purchase a property. Very, very important. You must market it. You must find local cash buyers, tons and tons of different ways. But if you aren't having luck with that, you're either not priced right or you haven't done enough marketing. That's really the only two reasons that a deal doesn't sell. And then finally, to the point that we want to make about this module in this video is closing the deal. So if you've already sent your contract to a local title company, or maybe you live in one of the 11 states that requires a closing attorney, I think it's 11, um, you're going to need to make sure that you get your contract to them right away, and you're going to want to deposit your earnest money. And again, hopefully that's only $10 or maybe $100 max but you don't have to have a crazy amount of earnest money. But by getting this deposited into that third-party escrow company and depositing your earnest money, your due consideration, that contract is a valid contract. And then the last part of this is finding the cash buyer from your marketing efforts and then either getting an assignment agreement that you then also take to your title company or closing attorney, or the other option is to use a double close. Now a double close, there's a couple different ways in which we can do a double close. We can do a dry double close, or we can do a wet double close. And a dry double close basically means that you have a really good relationship with your title company, and they allow you to use your end buyer, your cash buyer's funds, to buy the deal and then turn around and sell it to them. So it doesn't require you to have any money outside of your earnest money. A wet double close means that you might need to fund the deal for a minute, an hour, maybe a half a day, and then turn around and sell it. Now, if you have the funds to fund it, fund it. If you don't, there are transactional lenders and transactional funding companies. In fact, a couple of my title companies even do this for you locally in my market. It's wild. But they will actually charge you three, four, five hundred dollars to fund the deal for an hour. 
and then they'll sell the deal, they'll pay themselves back, and you get the difference. You get the proceeds. So there's some pros and cons to assignments, and there's some pros and cons to double closes. So let's start with the assignments. The pro to an assignment is you are essentially assigning your contract, and you are essentially telling your uh, your end buyer that they need to fill they need to fit into your shoes and they need to, to fulfill any obligations that you had with the seller. They need to buy it at the price that you told them that you were going to buy it at, maybe even more if you're going to charge an assignment fee. And they're going to need to close on the day that you and the seller agreed. Now, if they can't fulfill that, that's okay. Go back to the seller, be transparent, make sure everybody's in the loop and on the same page. But the most, the most, the most advantageous thing about an assignment is it reduces your costs. If I assign a deal for a ten thousand dollar assignment fee, I walk away with ten thousand dollars to the penny. I have no closing costs because my end buyer is going to have to fulfill what the agreement states. In this agreement that I share with you, the buyer has to pay the seller's closing costs. So the pros of the assignment are you are going to not have additional costs and whatever your assignment fee is, is what you're going to get paid. The cons or the downside to an assignment is you're going to have to disclose to your end buyer what you're making, right? They're not going to sign an assignment typically and step into your shoes without knowing what you've already promised the seller. So the pros are is that you're going to have less fees, but the cons are is that you're going to have to tell them what you're going to make. And you know, if you're making 60 or 80 grand, they may not be okay with that. So personally, we love doing assignments anywhere between 10 and 15,000 or less because our buyers don't typically care if we're making that amount of money. But when we're making 40 or 60 or 80 or I mean, one deal we made $330,000 on, we didn't want our end buyer to know that. So we decided to use a double close method instead. So one more time to recap here, the, uh, the assignment pros are you're going to have less costs and it's going to be very straightforward. Uh, the cons are you're going to have to disclose what you're making, right? Now let's switch over to the double close. With the double close, the pro is, is that you are going to be able to hide what you're making. Your end buyer isn't going to know if you're making 40 or 50 or $60,000 on the transaction. All right, but the cons are is that you're going to have closing costs. And in fact, you're going to have double closing costs. You're going to have the closing costs to buy the property and you're going to have closing costs to then turn around and sell the property. If you are paying the seller's closing costs, you're going to have to pay those fees. If you don't have the funds and the title company or maybe even the end buyer requires you to buy the property before you sell it to them, aka a wet double close, you may also have the cost of a transactional funder to help you fund the deal for a few minutes, an hour, I mean, maybe even a day or two max. But the great part about transactional funding is it's typically pretty cheap. I've seen anywhere from 1% of the purchase price to somewhere between three and $500 typically. And most transactional funders won't fund a deal unless they are certain and confirmed that the end buyer is ready to go and has the funds. And sometimes they won't even fund the deal until the buyer's funds are there because they want to limit their risk. I don't want to get too far into the weeds here, folks, but the main thing to know is that there are pros and cons to each different approach. The way I look at it typically is if it's ten dollars to $15,000, I'm going to try to do an assignment because it's going to make me more money and it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to have all these additional fees. If it's above $15,000 or maybe even above $10,000 on a really small price deal, I'm typically going to, going to you know, want to, want to uh, gravitate towards doing a double close. If I can do a dry double close without any of my own money, that's ideal. But if I have to fund it, I'm often going to borrow that money from a transactional lender um, to be able to get it done without any of my own money, which basically just means I'm going to walk with a little less proceeds. I'm not actually having to pay that money out of pocket most of the time. So keep it simple. There's really not that much to this business. Wholesaling is incredibly simple. Everybody wants to complicate this business, right? I didn't say it's easy. You got to spend a lot of efforts, maybe time, maybe money 
on marketing and finding these motivated sellers. And you got to go run appointments and make friends and make offers and determine repairs. And once you get a property under contract, you have to turn around and start marketing that contract and that property and that deal. So, you know, it's not necessarily going to be, you know, super easy, but the more you do it and the, and the longer you're in this business, the easier it's going to become. But simple is not the same thing as easy. Those are two different things. This business is incredibly simple. In effect, it's actually pretty easy too. Let's be realistic. But if you're brand new, just know that you're going to need to spend time and money on your marketing efforts. Now, the last thing I want to mention before I wrap up this video is make friends with the title company. If you are brand new and you've never done a deal, I would highly recommend and suggest you go find a title company that's local to you. Maybe ask other investors who they like to use. Maybe go to your local RIA clubs, your real estate investment associations, right? And ask who's the preferred title company for investors, for wholesalers doing double closes and assignments, and you're going to learn, all right? But make a friend with your title company. In fact, build a relationship with them because these folks can help you push deals over the finish line. They can help connect you with transactional funders in the event that your buyer or maybe the title company requires them. In fact, I think, you know, the laws are different from every city, every state, you know, in some areas in the country, they may require it. Here in St. Louis, Missouri, where I live and invest, they don't. And I love doing double closes because I don't need any money to be able to go get control of a property and sell it, but you may. So make friends with the local title company, build a relationship with them. And if you have any questions about the deal or the contract along the way, you can lean on the title company to help you. And in fact, I don't try to teach my students to go learn title. I just say, hey, go meet a title company that specializes in this and make a friend with them. And if you have questions along the way, ask them. But don't overthink it. This business is incredibly simple. And in fact, it's actually pretty easy too. But the marketing is the hardest part. It's marketing to find these sellers that are looking for your convenience. They're looking for somebody to buy their home or help them sell their home as is, quick and for cash. They don't want to deal with realtors and agents and brokers and on market and a bunch of inspections and a bunch of appraisals and a bunch of contingencies. So that's what we do as investors. We come in and we make it easy and we get paid whenever we get the deal over the finish line. Oh, and I almost forgot. When we're putting all this together and we're closing the deal, we're actually creating three wins in the process. The first win is we're helping a seller out of a bad situation and helping them sell a property that they probably don't want anymore. That's a big win. The second win is we get paid in the middle. That's a huge win. And the third and final win is we are helping a local investor, cash buyer, landlord, uh, fix and flipper, whatever it may be, find their very next deal. And in fact, whenever I am selling properties to my buyers, I want to know, hey, what are you doing with this? What's the plan? Are you fix and flipping it? Are you going to rent it? Are you going to burr it? You know, because I'm constantly learning from these other investors in my marketplace. So when we've successfully do a wholesale deal and we finalize the transaction, it's a happy day. We get paid, our seller's happy because they were able to get out of a situation, put money in their pocket, oftentimes quick with very little headaches or hassle. That's the convenience we offer. And our cash buyer loves us because they just got their next fix and flip or their next rental. We are out here creating triple winning scenarios, sometimes even four and five wins if there's more parties involved love this business. So don't overthink it, guys and girls. This is a very, very simple business and it can be very, very easy as well. But just know that it's a marketing business. You must market if you want to do deals. All right. The next section is all about the resources and some of the growth tools that we use in our business to make the marketing easier and make running appointments easier and making running comps and determining repairs and all these you know things that are required easier. So check out the next section in the next module. There's some growth tools in there. There's some resources. Uh, the contract, we have a joint venture agreement in there. We have an assignment agreement in there. And then we even offer um, access to me and my partner, Mike, 
as coaches, and we have several different communities that we work with each and every week in different groups to help mentor and coach people into not only doing their first deal, but into doing more deals. So check out that very last module down below. I want to thank you for taking this course. And again, there's a ton of value down below. So don't skip over that. Check it out. And we'll see you in the next module.